Welcome to Cougar Cast. I'm Heather Darrow, and today we're going to be talking about the 26th Knowledge is Power lecture series topic, Gene Editing, Virtue or Vice. And I have with me today Dr. Amy Helms, Professor of Biology and Professor of Political Science, Kimberly O'Neill. So, Dr. Helms, can you tell us a little bit about what is a gene and how in the world do we edit it? <laughs> <laughs> right. So I think the simplest way to think of a gene is it is a little piece of information, a code. You know, you can sort of even think about it as being like a little flash drive, right? You've got information on it. Um, and what is this information for? Um, it is a code to build all the things in our cells that we need for them to function. Uh, so that can include proteins, example, your hair is a protein. Uh, that could also, um, you know, traits like air, high eye color, hair color, but also diseases um, and issues um, with different parts of the body in terms of having a mutation in your genetic code. Gene editing then, um, and I like to talk, before I talk about gene editing, I like to say genetic engineering. Uh, and that is um, going about changing that code for the, hopefully the betterment of the individual that you're doing that for. And so can you tell us a little bit, uh, Professor O'Neill, about maybe how some of the general public is feeling about this topic, mm -hmm. um, given what's been happening in the news lately, and yes. uh, people actually editing or doing genetic engineering on humans. For those of us that are not in the science community, um, it's scary, right? And we fear the unknown, things that are not comfortable to us. Um, and this is an uncomfortable topic. And so when you talk about modifying anything, we're talking about fruit, or other things, that's one thing. But when we now begin to talk, have a conversation about modifying what a human could look like, um, we don't understand it. And it doesn't come across as something safe to do um, just because we don't understand it. And I think that's where a lot of the fear, we have not been educated enough, and we should be, in a way that brings it down to um, brings it down to language that everybody can understand. And so well, while it has to be scientific, it doesn't have to be so scientific where people were going to lose people in, in translation. And we're just going to lose people because it's just not interesting and it's uncomfortable. And so I think there's a lot of fear. I, I share that at the KIPP lecture that I, too, this is not comfortable for me. I'm not a science person. I've never been. Um, but this topic is interesting. Um, and it's scary. <laughs> and the things that we said in the lecture that were so far down the road happened a week later. Right. That is, that is actually a really funny story because at the lecture, you, you ended it with, and in the future, we may be talking about humans. And lo and behold, it was, what was that, the week? With, week one week. After? Yeah, one week. week. Within a week. <laughs> Yeah. Right. And so, you know, that makes it very relevant. Yeah. Um, so I'll address that, if you will. Um, so um, what happened in the news the next week was an announcement out of China that uh, two, two twin girls had been born that had had their genes edited. Uh, and so one of the, the fears about genetic engineering and gene editing was maybe you're going and putting in something that you think is good, but is it having unintended consequences? Uh, and so for humans, that's kind of a hard no, right? So we, we don't want anything um, that we don't feel like is trustworthy uh, in that process, because then you're doing that to, to a person, you know, not a plant, I guess. Um, and so what happened there was um, they used a new technology called CRISPR. Um, and CRISPR allows us to be very much more precise in our editing. So um, this you know, thing that had been around for a long time now applied to this one aspect of editing, you could go in and feasibly take a little piece out and replace it. Um, that being said, that um, you know, what we mentioned in the lecture was that's not ready for prime time. Um, <laughs> you know, and then you know, lo and behold, the next week um, it was there. And you know, still now these people, you know, scientists are going to have to go and see what follow these girls and what happens to them. Are there any unintended consequences? Uh, and actually, it turns out there's a couple more in the works that are, are women that were pregnant with gene edited babies. What does that mean in terms of policy? I, I always talk to my students about two different things government and politics, right? Government are the rules, the laws, the, 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 the policies that govern all of us. It's, it's the same thing across the board. 
And then there's politics, that's the ideology and our interpretation of that. Um, and my hope in this conversation coming forward is that it's open to more than just politicians and the science community, that the education is provided for, for everyone, and that when our, our legislators are making decisions and when the bureaucracies are making policies and procedures around this, that they're doing it, doing it in such a way that it's not based on anyone's moral compass, that it's based on the research, that it's based on the information, that it's, it's data-driven, um, versus I don't like it and I'm fearful or it just doesn't sound right. And that honestly is one of my biggest fears after working in government for 20 years that I know that sometimes decisions aren't made based on data and they're made based on our personal moral compasses. And in this particular situation, I have a feeling that more decisions are going to be made on based on personal beliefs than the data that's in front of us. So I, from talking to both of you before, I know that you advocate that uh, every person should become educated mm -hmm. on this topic so that they know what's going on? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. That's something I definitely talk about. You need to understand <laughs> this because it's your generation, our generation that is going to deal with the consequences of it. Um, and, you know, another example there is, you know, one of the things I said at the end where this isn't happening in humans, um, <laughs> that the idea of maybe going in and picking a trait here or there, that's one thing, but try to affect intelligence or you know, even your looks. Um, overall, that's not, we're not there with our, our genetic information. We, you, know, you can't go in and say, I'm gonna make this person more intelligent. There's a lot of genes that are involved in that and we don't understand them, right? So um, you know, that's sort of my problem with it in humans is I think that people are fearful because they think we can do things that actually we really can't uh, yet. But there are gonna be people that try anyway. I mean, and that's, that's to me sort of the scary part. And that's why I want everybody to understand uh, what we're really dealing with here. Um, so that's what we try to you know, get our students knowing that stuff. It's a prime yeah. example of knowledge is power. Absolutely. <laughs> that brings us back full circle. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you both for coming thank today. You. And we'll see you next time on CougarCast.